So in order to call uh, our provider to get our provider, we have uh, we need a way to get our ref because we should call a method of this ref object, and we need we must have this ref. So the most easy way to get this ref object is by uh, calling a consumer widget. For those who don't know, a consumer widget is a simple widget that allow us to access some data, uh, some data of uh, the provider, and you can use your, this consumer widget even in your stateless widget uh, without any problem. And only that part will uh, update, will change. So for example, if you have uh, multiple uh, widgets, uh, one inside another, only the part with the consumer widget will change. So it is re it's really uh, efficient if you have, for example, a big application and you don't need a lot of changes, but we, uh, you need uh, changes in a specific uh, part of your application. So it is better to go with a consumer widget without, for example, using other methods that inshallah we're going to see later. So yeah, to define a consumer uh, widget is really easy. First of all, uh, inshallah, we can change this text here and we can basically transform it to uh, to get this value here. So we can go here with our helper thing. We can um, wrap with widget and here we can, oops, we can type consumer and here he doesn't like this because he wants a builder and the builder uh, it wants uh, a function so it doesn't uh, get a child but it wants a function with uh, mainly uh, three arguments let me first of all Wrap this here. Oops, I've done a mistake. Okay. So here uh, we need a build context. Context. And here we have our widget ref. ref. And at the end we have our child, but we don't need it, so we use this syntax here. And it basically means that you don't need uh, this parameter here. So when you see this, uh, it is not like, uh, for example, JavaScript or jQuery that previously some people use it uh, to substitute the this keyword. So it is not like this if you are a web developer. So um, yeah, here we have our ref and um, that's it. Now, inshallah, we can basically um, we can use our ref to get our value. So the most easy way is to uh, call watch. There is another way that inshallah we're going to explain later. But for now, uh, the thing that you should know is that we can get our our value with watch. So let's define. Uh, uh, an integer my my value is equal ref dot watch and here we need the name of our provider that in this case is this one my provider so uh, riverpod is really easy so you you don't have to worry and um, have to define your the name of your variable here inside the watch it will call it so basically uh, ref that watch it watches for for your provider and watches for any change that will happen so if you do some changes with your provider it will update the value and uh, it will uh, reload everything inside the consumer widget in our case so a few things to note is that ref.watch uh, watches for changes so every time you do a change um, uh, it will update the value uh, but in our case we are using a simple provider that has no state so we are not able to change it uh, as I said before 
And yeah, so now let's try to call this variable here and see if things work. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot to return. So obviously here you should return your uh, the widget that changes. So as you can see, um, it works in this, in this way. So if you, for example, change the value uh, inside here, maybe inshallah later we can see it, if I remember. And um, yeah, uh, with the consumer widget, only uh, this part inside here will change if the value here changes and um, not the entire uh, the entire stateless or stateful widget. Mm. But obviously there are a lot of cases that we need to watch or use uh, uh, watch for the provider on the on our in, entire build in some cases or uh, in other states of the application, for example, the init state, etc. in uh, on this stateful widget. And inshallah, we are going to see um, this thing right now.